<laughs> some of you are used to this kind of thing with me right so in which case i think i'll get started so as always on zooms i have arkle somewhere around he might decide to interfere at some point he is fast asleep at the minute but i apologize in advance <laughs> so right let's get started so we're talking fireworks we're talking how to prevent problems we're going to cover tonight uh several different things we're going to cover desensitization the use of supplements or medication for some dogs uh how to handle your dogs if they do panic or have a stress reaction um what we can do to set your dog up for success on the day as well as um, some training games that you can play with them to help prepare them uh, firework phobia is quite common um it's it's not always logical i'll be honest um in the dogs it affects the only dogs of mine who have had a firework phobia are very confident dogs um my fearful dogs don't seem to be so bothered. Um, I couldn't tell you why, <laughs> but it's not always not always like that, but it's a trend that I've definitely seen. Um, and I feel like proposing to someone with capabilities to do a research study on. Um, so whatever age your dog, it is worth being aware that um, they can spontaneously develop a fear of fireworks. Um, it could be that they have had a negative experience um i know that my neighbors don't always like to tell me where they're setting fireworks off <laughs> two doors down um and you could have just happened to have your dog outside and a fireworks got off and that startled them some dogs are quite uh, anxious about noises anyway um whereas some dogs there's no logic so any dog can be prone to firework fear what we want to do is set them up for success and the best way that we can set them up for success around fireworks is using sound desensitization sound desensitization is not fun <laughs> it's a bit of a repetitive process um some of you will be used to repetitive processes with the training we do anyway <laughs> um things are always exciting but sound desensitization with fireworks noises is one of the most effective ways you will get them used to fireworks the problem is that sometimes there is a lot of um, unhelpful uh, suggestions regarding that or just a lack of information. People just say, desensitize them to fireworks and they will be fine. But they don't explain how you're going to do that. And that can mean sometimes as owners, we can do it a bit wrong and it can go the opposite way and cause more of a reaction. So we want to do this effectively and get them used to the sound of fireworks, meaning no big deal. The easiest way to do this and to do it without stress is going to be to use uh, technology at your disposal. So most of you, all of you, if you're online, have access to the internet, have access to Google. Um, I would just YouTube firework desensitization for dogs. If you did that right now, I'm sure many of you <coughs> would find thousands of videos. Make sure when you do it, if you're about to do it, your computer or device of some kind is on mute. Otherwise, you're going to click it and potentially terrify your dog, which I would rather you didn't. So you're going to find these sounds and you are going to preferably, although I know in not all cases um, that's possible, but preferably uh, sync your device to like a speaker that you can place somewhere there where your dog is likely going to hear fireworks at the windowsill um you know at the, the back window the front window wherever it might be and I, I i think it's important to do this because i found with my firework phobic dog he knew the difference between uh fireworks played on a laptop or my phone versus a, a sound that occurs that he doesn't think is associated with me so you're going to play these sounds uh synced up to a device you're gonna play the sound at the lowest volume to start with. You're gonna think you can't hear it. And that's as low as you should start. Um, you don't wanna start high. You know, people start with this medium uh, volume, sometimes even high, and just go, let's see how they will react. But if they react badly, you now have to undo that bad reaction. It's so much easier 
to get your foundations correct than to have to go back and correct that one little wrong move at the start. Because if that one little wrong move um, terrifies your dog, it's not one little wrong move, it's quite a big wrong move, right? So you're gonna start at the lowest, lowest volume possible. And honestly, if, you're, if your device says there's a volume notch and you can't hear it, that's acceptable. <laughs> that's an acceptable level of volume because it's really worth considering that one of the reasons that your dogs are likely terrified of fireworks or maybe so, is because their hearing is so much more attuned than ours. So that tiny little volume is probably gonna be quite loud to them. They will certainly notice it if they are going to notice it. So um, <clears throat> you want to be starting with that low volume. How you do that low volume is gonna vary from dog to dog. So for example, I personally prefer to use this low volume on like a speaker, when my dogs are enjoying puzzles, when they're doing things that keep their brains busy and not fixated on what else might be going on. Um, my dogs are easily um, startled by changes in their environment. Um, Arkel in particular is quite a nervous dog by nature. Um, Marley is absolutely a nervous dog <laughs> by nature. And what I don't want to do is start playing it and for them to go, oh my goodness, what is that noise? I would rather initially they were kept quite busy with a Kong, with a licky mat, with a snuffle mat, with a chew, with an ostrich bone, um, whatever it might be. There's a few things maybe keeping them busy and it doesn't need to be for long. It could be for about five minutes, 10 minutes, and then you switch it off. Equally, you can do it when your dog is just resting. But again, be aware of your dog as an individual and if that little tiny volume is likely to startle them while they're sleeping, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to startle them. Then don't do it. But for example, Ollie, if I just had Ollie, I could easily play this while he's at rest and it wouldn't really bother him. It would desensitize him effectively. I probably wouldn't do it with Marley and Arkel because they do notice changes in their environment quite easily and it would probably have the opposite effect, even if it was at that lowest volume. So you've got you've got the other uh, lowest volume. It's all very boring. Good training with behavior modification is boring. <laughs> You're doing it right. It's not looking very exciting. It's not like TV stuff. It's it's quite boring. <laughs> so you're going to do quite a few sessions on that lowest volume possible because, as with anything, it takes repetitions to become habit. If you go, which is where a lot of people make the mistake, if you go lowest volume, that went well, tick. Next volume, that went well, tick. That went well, tick. And you keep going up. You're probably not desensitizing as effectively as you think you are because you're going harder and harder. And if your dog has any firework uh, fear existing or they are likely to panic, you've not really set your foundation strongly. And if we don't have strong foundations, as many of you know, and are bored to death with me, uh, if you don't have those strong foundations, when there is a weakness further up, everything crumbles back down really quickly. So you're going to play at the lowest volume for at least, uh, for the sake of argument, three or four times. They're doing well at that. Wonderful. You've, you've then got some data, for lack of a better word. They were fine. They weren't bothered. It wasn't a fluke. It didn't happen just once. It wasn't all well, it could be because they're tired twice. You've got a few consistent responses. Then you increase the volume. Um, you could do that either, again, by reading your dogs, by starting at the next uh, notch on your volume thing um, from the start. Or you could have it low and just raise it a little bit. I, I think I would be inclined to just raise it at the get-go personally. But again, some of you know your dogs very well. All of you do, in fact. Um, you will be best to know. But you're going to raise the volume by one notch, not two because they're doing well, not three, one. And you're going to raise that volume that one notch and carry on what you were doing, whether that was keeping them busy with puzzles, whether that was, um, you know, just while they're chilling. Um, you could even, if, you know, if they enjoy training, do it during training, you know. I think if I still had Arthur, um, he was quite fine with fireworks, but if I were trying to desensitize him, Another alternative could be that I uh, 
did the flirt pole with him with the sounds of fireworks in the background. Austin loves the flirt pole. <laughs> he loved the flirt pole a lot. Um, and for those who don't know, the flirt pole is basically a stick with a rope and a toy on the end. It's brilliant. <laughs> so you're going to each time play it three to four times and increase the volume a notch. You should be aware that it's only a few weeks um, until bonfire night. So I would certainly be being, um, oh, what's the right word? You all know I'm rubbish with words. Uh, I would be being um, careful, it's not the right word. I would be proactive. You knew I'd get that. Um, I would be proactive. I would be inclined to be doing this several times a day, as long as my dog wasn't showing signs of fear. I would be every few playthroughs, every few days, increasing that volume and keeping them used to it. If at any point your dog shows signs of being uh, startled or alarmed during your playthrough of the volume, that tells you that volume is too high for your dog. If they're looking around and they're a bit startled when you increase the volume, but they very quickly settle down, again, knowing your dog personally is going to go a big way into this, but I would not be overly concerned. If, however, I play it and every time one of the big bangs goes off, my dog looks around or panicked, it is too high. The only thing I can do is drop the volume back down because behavior is just information. They're panicking, they're looking around, it's too high. We can't go faster than the pace of the dog in front of us. And that's where I'm gonna to come to later because obviously we only have a few weeks. And if you already have a firework phobic dog, that's probably not gonna be long enough to desensitize them. But for those of us with um, puppies or dogs who certainly haven't shown a major reaction in the past and won't show it early on, it should be a long enough period of time to desensitize them effectively. You absolutely must, must, must get used to knowing your dog and their behavior and their body language. I think this is something that isn't coming enough. Um, by me, by general people. I can give you general body language advice, but we've all got varied breeds here. Some of you have whippets, we've got Gordon Setters, Cockapoos, Spaniels, we've got everything. And what looks fearful in one dog does not necessarily look the same in another. And the lower levels of those stress are gonna look different. You want to look out for those lower signs of stress. So in general, that is gonna be, they hear the sounds, they physically startle a bit. Maybe they pin their ears back. Maybe their tail drops. Um, some of your dogs, uh, and I've seen this in person with some of your dogs, they become just a bit manic. Um, they just become a little bit more higher energy. Um, and they start, you know, they might still continue their puzzles, but it might become a frenzied run around the puzzles to get them done quicker. If we see those lower levels of stress, we just stop that session because while we could drop the volume um, in that session, it's more a sign that we should just quit that, that session and drop the volume next session and carry on at that volume, if that makes sense. Because if we are losing, there is no use in then dropping the volume because they can still hear it and they're still in that state of stress and panic. Uh, we don't want that to continue because we're trying to do the opposite. So, the the clear goal for this is desensitization, fireworks being no big deal, rather than sensitization, which is they hear a firework and they are startled and they become panicked. So if you're seeing any signs of them startling, panicking, looking distressed, always go back a step. As, as boring as it is, and I've had a firework phobic dog and I've had dogs who are, I wouldn't say the opposite, but my Jack Russell, as I'm sure you can all imagine, enjoyed barking at fireworks. I don't think he was scared. I, I, I feel like he thought it was a competition. He would run at the walls and bark. And if he was let out, he would just run around barking. Um, so this isn't gonna be a quick process if your dog is firework phobic or they show signs of firework phobia as they progress. And if they're a puppy, you go at the pace they're going. Ideally, we are preventing problems by being proactive rather than waiting for a problem. So that is the basic, very basic foundation of how I would, one way I would plan ahead for fireworks. However, 
fireworks are not always helpful <laughs> because they're just not. <laughs> I, where I live, I am not a fan of fireworks. They will be going off uh, probably in a week or so, um, every few days until mid-January. Um, we are a bit sick of fireworks here. <laughs> Apologies if you enjoy them, but we, we are sick of them here. Um, there are a lot of other elements, though, aside from desensitization. There are lots of ways we can plan ahead. There are lots and lots of other things we can do. But gradual desensitization is the gold standard of what you should be working on. If you have any questions on that, pop them in the chat box. Um, I'm going to come to lots more things, but that is like the foundational skill that I would go forward with. Um, so I'll give anyone a chance if they've got questions. Um, so the next step that I'm going to talk about is um, if you already have a firework phobic dog or you have good suspicions that your dog will be firework phobic. Um, and I think it's really worth doing this as soon as possible. Um, if that if you're if either of those, sorry, apply to your dog. And that would be you should probably think about supplements or medication. Both of these will get somewhere and go, my dog doesn't need that. <laughs> and I, you know, I get that. I get that fully. But supplements or medication can be very, very helpful. And I'm going to come to why in a moment and how and which supplements and I can't recommend medications, but we can discuss the medications that may be available talking to your vets. So step one, if I have a dog who is terrified of fireworks, I really would urge you to go to your vet and talk to them. Because if you know your dog is terrified of fireworks, it's only a few weeks away till there's going to be loads you are not going to have the time to effectively desensitize them. And every time your dog has a bad experience with fireworks going off, it just reinforces the idea that fireworks are scary and it's going to make it a much harder habit to break. So with those kind of dogs who might already be firework phobic or you have good reason to believe they might be, I would go and talk to your vet. And this is a conversation that people can find a bit icky. Um, they don't like talking about medications and dogs because they have preconceived notions that it's it's not fair. Um, essentially, if you know your dog's going to be terrified, you've got you've got a history that they're terrified. They they pan, they pace, they they can't take food. They're they're looking pretty distressed. It's crueler to keep them suffering through it than it is to talk to your vet about a medication that might either um, just knock them out a little bit so they don't have the experience or a medication that will help soothe their anxiety. I'm not a vet, I can't tell you what medications would be best for your dog. Um, I would suggest if you go to your vet, see if there is a vet in your practice who is more experienced with sound phobias or more experience with behavior problems, um, as they would be absolutely best advised to, uh, the best to give you advice on medication and discuss it with you. Um, as just a, you know, a, a reference, one of my dogs used to be terrified of fireworks, um, and I wasn't sure how he was gonna cope one year, and I spoke to my vet, who knowing my dog, and my dog's medical history, can't emphasize that enough, um, he prescribed, uh, I think it was trazodone for him, um, and, Thankfully, this is the weirdest thankfully I've ever had. Ollie went deaf shortly after <laughs> and he could not hear fireworks. So that kind of solved it <laughs> really quickly. Um, so we did not require the medication. However, if your vet recommends medication for your dog, I would go with the, I would go with the idea of trialing the medication before it happens. What you don't want to do is get a medication Think it's going to be fine and then on the night you discover it does nothing for your dog or it gives them really bad side effects that's going to be horrible and I, and I keep saying night obviously you're probably going to be in a few days beforehand too and the weekend and where I live forever afterwards um you should trial that medication um I would make sure your vet gives you a couple of extra doses and you trial it when you're going to be home and with them and all of that kind of thing 
Um, the only thing I do know, uh, medication wise, again, I can't give uh, advice on medications, but my best understanding is that there is one that does act quicker because obviously you don't know when fireworks are going to go off, as I've just stated a hundred times with neighbors. Um, and I think it is called Silio, S I L E O. Again, you'd have to talk to your vet about it. But my understanding, again, I could be wrong, is that you rub it on the gums and it acts really fast. So that can be good if you're not sure when they're going to happen. You should talk to your vet if your dog has firework phobia. If your dog has recently become very sound sensitive and they were not sound sensitive before, um, I would still uh, go to your vet. I'm going to say this a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I would still go to your vet because uh, sudden fear of noises and a spontaneous fear of fireworks sort of after, I would say, 18 months to two years, might suggest there is some underlying pain or medical issue going on. Uh, pain and noises, sensitivity are very often linked. And I know some of you are absolutely bored to death of that conversation with me, and I can't apologize enough. Um, but it is a really common link. So if you find that, go to your vet and ask them to do a, an orthopedic exam on your dog to check for signs of pain. Because if pain is causing sound phobia, then we need to address the pain. There is no use just addressing it with a behavioral component. So where, uh, where, where necessary, where, where you are concerned, go to your vet. It, it will feel, I, you know, I did feel a bit like, oh no, does, does Ollie need medication? But it would be far, if you haven't gone there, far crueler um, for me to just sit there and watch him terrified. Um, I went deaf very young. Um, it, it's not nice and it's not nice for them it's not nice for us there are alternatives your vet will be best to advise you how you can use medication with behavior training it's not a solution on its own but it will help with the training okay if you have any questions on that you can ask i don't know if, i don't even know if the chat box pops up maybe you've already asked i don't even know sometimes how these things work no that's okay um i do it's just sometimes I forget. Um, so if you've not got a dog who is firework phobic, if you've got a dog who's a bit sensitive or you are just not sure how they're gonna react, supplements can be a different way to go. Uh, supplements are obviously, um, when they are brought from the right resources, effective and safe for your dogs. Um, obviously when brought from the right resources, which I will discuss in a moment. Um, it can just help take the edge off if it's gonna help your dog. In my experience, supplements are a horses for courses um, scenario where, what, where, where one thing helps one dog, it may not necessarily help another dog. It's one of those things. If I'm gonna use supplements, I am going to start now. Many supplements take a few weeks to kick into the system. Um, I'm gonna list some supplements that I um, either use with my dogs or I know that are you know effective and safe so as always if your dog is on medication you must talk to your vet if you ever have any doubts please talk to your vet um, you want to start now so there are lots of things that are marketed as um, helping dogs uh, with firework phobia I go for supplements that are generally quite good for anxiety or stress so um, in this room right now I am being delighted by the smell of Pet Remedy. Um, I use a Pet Remedy plugin um, pretty much all the time um, in this room for my dogs. Um, it helps relax. Um, it's supposed to be valerian and all sorts. And it's supposed to help just de-stress dogs. Personally, I love the smell of it, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I think it's amazing. Um, so I'm quite happy to plug that in. Um, there are various brands of plugins. Pet Remedy is my preferred one, as honestly, I do see good effects with my dogs and also I'm fond of the smell of it. Um, Adaptil is another one uh, that works in a different way, though, rather than being a sense that the dogs may find calming. Um, it is like a like a chemically produced pheromone that uh, lactating bitches produce, I believe. Um, there is lots of evidence to suggest that can be helpful. Again, it's a horses for courses thing. 
it doesn't work with mine in general, but it might help with yours. You can get either of those pet remedy or a dactyl in a spray, a plug in. I think the pet remedy has wipes. I think it has everything possible. <laughs> uh, there are many options. So along with that, other supplements that are available. Uh, there's a huge list. I've only listed a few here. So if you want to ask about any that you were thinking about, you can in the chat box. Um, Skullcap and Valerian by Dorwest um, is a good company. Um, it's well regulated. Um, it's it's definitely one I found a good effect with. Yeah. It will tell you sort of how many times a day to give it. And I would either give it as a yeah. uh, low de loading dose. Like I would give it daily in the run up to bonfire night in that period um, at the dose they recommend. Or Dorwest do uh, Valerian drops, which act very, very fast. In my experience, someone might tell me otherwise, Dorwest drops and tablets require some persuasion to consume. Um, ham is usually my solution, whether that is tablets rolled in ham, Valerian dripped onto ham. Arthur did not like ham. Uh, Arthur did not like ham. Arthur loved ham. Arthur did not like Valerian. Um, but if it involved ham, he would he would he would tolerate it. He would look at me with disgust, but he would tolerate it. Um, so Dorwest has our options available. I am absolutely certain if you went onto their website right now um, and you and you you googled it, you put in their website, they would probably have like a fireworks special on there. Um, Dorwest, uh, school cap of Larian and uh, fireworks, anxiety reducing products. That's where I was going with that. Um, you've got that option. I personally love for Arkle, um, Calm K9 by AO K9. Um, I, I, I took him off it for a few weeks because of all of his vet trips. And I did notice a reduction in his confidence. He is on it almost permanently. I, I could easily use it as I think I will as a supplement for the older dogs just in case this fireworks night. Um, but I think that is another one that you definitely want to talk to your vet about if your dog is on any medications. Um, as a general rule, stress reducing um, supplements are up, up my street. Um, I give mine vitamin B complex, um, which again, if you went and searched on Amazon, vitamin B complex, I think by Vetzyme, it is really, really cheap. Um, it's just vitamin B complex. And there are uh, studies that suggest this can help reduce stress or assist the body's tolerance of stress. Um, so that's an option available, as well as fish oils are supposed to help reduce stress. Um, anecdotally, and all of that kind of thing. Um, so you have the option of supplements. If you're going to start any, Start now and don't quit halfway through and change your mind. It's, it takes around two to six weeks um, for some of them to kick in. So if you're going to be using them, take a look, ask me questions if you need to and get them started. Don't just go after a few days. I don't think it's helping. I quit. Takes a bit of time. It takes a bit of time. Um, so we've got the option of supplements. They're on there, as always, ask any questions. Um, so we've got supplements ticked off. We've got visiting your vets ticked off. I'm not rambling as much as usual. You think this is bad, I can ramble more. This is going quite well. <laughs> I'm getting through this at a really good pace, actually. Um, so let's now talk about other ways that we can ensure that when life happens with the fireworks, that we can handle our dog's responses appropriately if they are fearful or just as those fireworks happen. So, you take a deep breath. <laughs> this is one of those things that makes me take deep breaths. There are many people out there that will tell you if your dog is worried, if they are scared, and if they are panicked, you should not give them fuss. If you give them fuss, it will reinforce their fear. It will make them more likely to be scared next time and it won't teach them how to deal with it. This is wrong. I wish I had a little flashy light thing. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Couldn't be more wrong. It's absolutely everywhere and it drives me utterly insane every year because it's one of those things that just really bugs me 
because it's just not true. It's not true in any respect. If your dog is scared of something and you reassure them, you cannot make them more scared. They are not being scared to get your attention. If we think about this logically, your dog, if they get startled by a firework, is reacting from an emotional place. The same way you might react uh, anxiously if you see something you're scared of or hear something you weren't expecting. Um, you did not do that for attention. Your dog did not do that for attention. So giving your dog attention cannot reinforce it because the underlying reason for it was not, please give me attention. The reason your dog reacted was from a fight or flight response of, oh God, what was that? I'm terrified. I don't know how to handle this. If we reassure them, they will likely feel safer. If they are looking for reassurance, if they are hiding away, I would probably leave them to hide and not be too dramatic like sometimes we as humans can be, which I've definitely been in the past. Um, but reassuring them, giving them some fun, being all upbeat and oh my goodness, don't worry about the fire, there's a slice of ham in the fridge. Ham is used a lot in my house. Um, it's not going to reinforce the fear. It's not going to reinforce a startle response. It's not going to reinforce fear. If your dog asks for help and you give them help, you will help them feel safer. And if they feel safer, they're going to be less likely to react to things. Um, I've got some videos I'm going to send over like after this as well. What, I've got videos of Arkle startling. If my dog startle, startles, I reassure them. So I keep saying the word startle, probably not explained what I mean. Quite good at that sometimes, sorry. By a startle response, most dogs will startle at the sound of some of these fireworks, even if they're not necessarily scared. It's a really sudden change in the environment. It's an absolutely massive noise for me. <laughs> I don't like the sound of some of these fireworks. I dread to think what it would be with hearing as uh, discerning as dogs. They're gonna startle. That might mean they jump, might mean they look around, they wake up from sleep and go, what the, what on earth was that? And they might look at you as if say, what was that? Um, if my dogs do that, I do my happy routine. And I go, oh my God, what was that? You're right, what, what a ridiculous noise. Big smile on my face, big TV presenter voice, kids TV presenter voice, it's absolutely fine. Touch them if they like being touched in a really upbeat like I would in play. If my dog is like, mm, I don't know, I might scatter some food, and I will carry on. And if it is just a startle response, we've worked through it together. We said, hey, look, it's a bit stressful, but do you know what? I'm fine, you're fine. There might have been some food involved for some of you, <laughs> maybe not all of you. Um, that is gonna help them feel a lot happier about it. If we did that consistently with things they startle with, they're gonna realize, no, nah, it's all right. It's not a big deal. If my dog, starts to become anxious um, and they may start to pace, um, they may start to hide, they may start to shake, they may start to drool, they may start to do everything. Um, I would try and offer food and I would try and get a pie with them. I would try and do something upbeat. But if my dog just looks at me like, why on earth would you offer me food? I am having a panic attack. I'm gonna just sit with them and be there for them. Because if I've got no medication in to help them and they're absolutely terrified and nothing is working, then I've, the only thing I can do is be there for my dog. Um, if they are that terrified, they're probably not gonna take food. You can offer it. Um, they're probably not gonna because their body has gone into complete fight or flight. And that means that they stop, uh, they stop doing things that aren't essential in fight or flight. Eating? Not essential, <laughs> not essential when you're terrified. Um, so you want to just be there if they're terrified. You don't need to make a big deal of it. There's not a lot you can do if they get into that state. You can offer them the food, you can offer them the play, but you just sort of need to be there with them and keep a very close eye on them, which I'm gonna come to in a moment. <laughs> um, but reinforcing their feet, uh, try again. But fussing them, reassuring them won't reinforce a fear. 
it's more likely to help you. Your, if your dog is quite sensitive anyway, and I think this is the approach I'm gonna go with uh, personally, if my dog's quite sensitive anyway, Arkle, but here's a bang. A bang is gonna mean a slice of ham in my house for the next few weeks. Um, I think that's a repertoire I came up with earlier. Every bang is a slice of ham because that is the quickest way to make a good association. A good association is almost better than a neutral one. Um, so, you know, if your dog's not really a concerned dog, you think they might startle, go with the startle response of being upbeat um, and giving them some fuss. But if you know your dog is sensitive, you know it's got potential to go either way. Yes, as it happens or click or whatever you use, go grab some food. Um, I would have your food readily available in your fridge <laughs> if you're using like ham, cocktail, sausages, you know, the like. Personally, I go as high value as I can because the higher the value, the quicker the association. I give you a million pounds for something you hate, you're going to like it a little better quicker than if I give you a quid. You know, it's all right. I'd like the million pounds, please. <laughs> so if you have any doubts, yes, and a slice of ham. Some people will say that's going to make them more alert. I can easily fade that out. You know, if it's going to be going on for a few days, it's easier to fade that out than to do the desensitization to the fireworks all over again because it went wrong. So don't ignore your dog and, unless they tell you to go away. <laughs> and some dogs might. And absolutely ignore your dog if they, they are growling at your approach. If they want space, give them space. I mean, some, some overseas rescues might prefer space. That's absolutely fine. But if your dog needs reassurance, give them reassurance. Again, you're always welcome to ask questions. I will shuffle my way on to the next section. So we've got a few different things that we're doing here. We have prepared our sound desensitization. We've spoken to our vet. Maybe we've got some supplements. We know how to handle a stress response. How should we handle the days where we know fireworks are gonna happen? Knowing how to handle those days is gonna make the evening a little easier. So we want to make sure, you know, we know bonfire night fireworks will be going off. Again, where I live, it's probably going to be a seven day period. So I'm going to be prepared for that seven day period and probably beyond. <laughs> but for that seven day period, I'm going to do this protocol. And for me, that would be I would do a long, calm decompression walk with my dogs um, on those days. By that, I mean a walk where they can not encounter things that are going to stress them. So if you have a fearful dog, you go to the walk in, in the middle of nowhere. Um, if you have a dog who is overexcited, equally I might take my dog somewhere quiet. I'm going to take them somewhere, let them off the lead. If their recall is no good, I am going to put them on a long line. I personally will probably stick with a long line over that period because unfortunately there are always for lack of a better word, idiots uh, who are setting off fireworks at random times. I don't want my dog to hear one and bolt. Uh, so I'm gonna err on the side of caution during this period and stick with a long line. But by allowing them freedom and the ability to sniff, that is gonna de-stress your dogs more. Yes, de-stress is the right word. <laughs> I had to think that. Um, it should be allowing them to be a dog, running, sniffing, all of the things that they enjoy going to mentally tire them. It's going to meet a load of needs. It doesn't need to be ball throwing back and forth. It doesn't need to be something that kicks in their adrenaline. It just needs to be something they enjoy. I would do that. That's how I always did it with um, Ali and one ball. We went for a nice long morning walk, a really long walk. I think we walked from where I live to Burton by Lincoln, looped around and back. They were exhausted. So <laughs> um, that is what I would do. Uh, take them on a long decompression walk. I would uh, have any tools I am likely to use, such as Kongs, uh, snuffle mats and such, ready to roll, ready in fridges, cupboards, wherever you might have your items. Um, I would make sure that you have an area set up for your dogs in advance, like a safety area. 
Um, this is always a really complicated to me subject because it's going to vary dog to dog. By a safety area, I mean a place that your dog goes to when they are anxious or if they feel worried, they know they will not be disturbed. So this can be helpful um, to, you know, have with, you know, if there are kids in the house as well and you want the dog to have some space away from the fireworks and maybe the excitement of kids watching fireworks. Um, it should be an area the dog can go to have some peace. It might be that you add extra beds. Um, what I will be doing is I will be setting up two canvas crates. Um, that I always have. And I set them up because if Ollie was ever scared, he would go and hide in a crate. Um, he loves a crate. If your dog doesn't like a crate, don't do it. Um, but if your dog is happy with that kind of setup, make a little den for them. You can make a den out of furniture. You can, you know, shove a chair up against something, put a blanket over it. It's, it's that whole thing of most dogs feel safer in a den-like space. So I will be setting up den-like spaces just in case um, Arkle gets worried or Ollie spontaneously can hear. You never can tell with Ollie. Never sure like what he's faking and isn't. I don't know. I'm sure he heard his name earlier. I said, I'm sure you're deaf. Joy of being 13, he can do what he likes. Um, <laughs> gone off the boil. I knew I would at some point. Um, so you have this den like space. Um, uh, for, for Ollie, this was always weirdly upstairs. Um, he, at the first sign of anything, he would just try and run upstairs. And at first we would try and stop him because usually they're not allowed upstairs without um, our supervision in my house. But I, in the end, I was just like, just, just go where you want to go. Uh, and his favorite place was just to sit on the landing. So I just take a couple of beds onto the landing. Uh, sometimes it was the bathroom. I chuck some beds in. And he was honestly, he, he didn't come for reassurance. He was happy on his own. He would sell down. Um, having those spaces is good. Again, if you've got some spray, that they like, spray it on the items, not on the dog, um, beforehand so it smells nice. So you want to have a space for them. You want to make sure they've got their ID tags on. I would have collars and ID tags on because you just don't know what's going to happen in the house. Um, you want to make sure that they have done their toileting long before the evening. Um, again, I know there will be fireworks set off about 3 or 4 p.m. where I live. Um, so I will be feeding them their meals much earlier. I will be making sure they go out for toilets much earlier. And because I just know otherwise we're going to get caught off guard. I am going to on the night take any dog who I have any doubts about out on lead on a secure collar or a secure harness if they need it. If they absolutely insist on going out during the fireworks going off, like they're going to pee everywhere and they don't want to pee everywhere. Personally, I don't mind my dog peeing everywhere versus them getting out. But you know, it's, it's one of those battles. You know, if you've got a new fans and you might not want them peeing all over your floor. It might be like, oh God, I need a new carpet. Um, so if you have to take them out, take them out when it's quiet, take them out on a lead. Because if one goes off while your dog's in the garden, even if they were fine in the house, it's going to be really easy for them to startle. And when they're out in the open, they're going to potentially try and bowl. And you might think your dog can't clear your four foot fence or your six foot fence. However, when your dog is terrified, they can do absolutely anything. The last thing you want your dog to do is get out um, because that's going to be pretty much disastrous. I am personally going to have a smaller area of my garden fenced off um, because I have quite a big garden. And even though Marley has always been fine and like literally weirdly fine, I'm not trusting that's going to be the case um, in age. And if he insists on going out, he's going to go out into a fenced in part where he absolutely, if he got out, would only get into the rest of the garden. By which point I am watching him. He's not going to get very far. So I'm going to set up like, you know, a military prison for my dogs because I would rather they were safe than not. I would take them out on leads. I would take them out on a double leads if they're really scared. They're really, honestly, if they're that scared, I, I think I'd just let them pee on the floor. Um, I know some of you who are house training your dogs will think I'm absolutely ridiculous for saying that. But honestly, I'd rather my dogs just peed on the floor. <laughs> um, do not 
fall into the trap of taking your dog out to watch the fireworks to see if they like them. Again, what happens if they don't like them? You have to go back every step you've done. They can, they can hear them in the house. They can see them. They don't need to go out and enjoy them because someone's gonna set something off right next to your house. Can you tell how much I love, love it? My neighbors do this. Um, they honestly feel like they are hitting my house. <laughs> so you are gonna take them on a long decompression walk, um, probably early morning rather than late evening. You don't wanna get caught out with rogue fireworks. You have uh, worries about safety. You will use a long line on that walk. If you, uh, if anyone should be putting ID tags on their dogs. Um, if you have any worries, so to be honest, it's just sensible. I would take them out on a lead to be cautious if they have to go out. Um, it's one of those things where I do appreciate. You might hear nothing for hours. You might not hear anything at all. I would check in the daytime <coughs> that the, the area is nice and secure. There's no little holes a terrier could get out of and no big gaping gaps in the fence a whippet could climb. Um, offer reassurance if they need it, um, set up their area and plan ahead. So that's how I would handle the day, maybe along with 200 sniffing activities because they're nice and calming, but everything's gonna be, for me gonna wind down quite early on in the day. So what we've got is a plan of sound desensitization, maybe supplements, a safe area, the opportunity for reassurance, the opportunity for rewards when they hear it. There is another way we can help them though. And this is one of my favorite ways. And honestly, I, I love the approach and I found it to be um, really helpful for my dogs. And that is, I will play lots of games that require noises to be made. And my dog is in control of those noises. Control is something that makes everyone feel happier and safer. When you're at the dentist and you know that when you fling up your hands, they're going to stop. You might not love it, <laughs> but you know you've got that option. If they said, shut up, sit down, you're going to prize your jaws open and do it anyway, you'd be a little less inclined to feel safe, I would think. Um, so if we can put some control about sound in your dog's hands or paws, as it were, they're going to be way happier about noises, in theory. <laughs> um, and in my experience, it works great. Um, what do I mean by control in their paws? So I've got a list of games. I've got a list of them. I play lots of games. The most simple game is a noise box game. Get a cardboard box, get a plastic box, get any kind of box. Get yourself some plastic bottles. We all get through loads of plastic um, in society. You're going to get plastic bottles. Chuck them in that box. Chuck your dog's food in it. Let them find the food. If your dog is terrified of noises, please start with one bottle. If your dog is sort of mid-range, only start with a few. What's gonna happen is your dog is gonna root around in that box and they're gonna hear a noise. They're gonna say, oh, it ends in food because they're sniffing around for food. Noise means food. That is the message we are trying to send. Noise boxes can be anything. I will be varying everything and anything possible. I might put in some, uh, light like metal dishes um it, you know into a box for arkle um i could um do all sorts with that so i've got noise boxes as one option um i love it's my favorite game i say this about every game though i think i see this in classes a lot this is my favorite game is push bottle um push bottle some of you might have done i don't think many of you um if any in fact push bowl all of your dog needs um, is foundation in knowing touch. Um, for those that don't know, touch is touching an object with their nose, which I will send along with this. Um, if they know touch, you are going to get a, an empty plastic bottle. You're going to put that plastic bottle on a blanket if your dog's very noise sensitive. You're going to ask your dog to touch your hand in front of the bottle. They're going to touch your hand into the bottle. It will knock the bottle over. Yes, they get the treat. That bottle falling means food. An empty plastic bottle isn't very noisy, but I would start with that. And I can progress that. I can start to have some pasta in a bottle, rice in a bottle, water in a bottle, big bottle, small bottle, couple of bottles, 
any random items. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a bottle. Your dog learns, they push, it makes a noise, they get food. How good is that? They can create noise and noise can create food. That is gonna help them feel a lot more confident about sounds in general. Got push bottles, noise boxes. Um, I love games where I incorporate tricks my dogs already know into noise games. So for example, ringing a bell, you've seen those desk bells. I think you might have seen them because I post them a lot uh, with my dogs doing them. I teach my dogs to pour a desk bell, ring, they get a treat. That clanky horrible noise, which it is, a really horrible noise, means food. Get a dog, uh, get a dog's kid's keyboard, get a kid's keyboard. Um, it's very niche, however, charity shops might have them. I teach my dogs to pour out that. Noise means food. There are a million things I can think of that make noises. I can get my dogs walking on um, like metal, old metal baking trays. Um, I can get them walking on foil. It's all gonna make a bit of a noise. And a bit of a noise, is gonna result in food at the end. You're gonna give them food. If they're not confident about noise, think about a treat hierarchy. You wanna go best treats. You don't wanna necessarily use the dry food. You wanna go, yes, good stuff. Which for Arkle, oh my God, he's fast asleep. Um, which for Arkle is dried liver and stupidly expensive treats. Cause he's very picky. Because I couldn't just have a, a you know, a food bin as a dog, apparently. That sentence made no sense. So I've got some games I can play. Noise games, again though, be aware of your dog. If your dog's flinching every time he knocks a bottle over, maybe go back a step. Maybe start with something else. See if they can knock. I'm trying to look around, see what I've got. See if they can knock, you know. Oh, you know, the door to their crate. Can they push it? That's gonna make a bit of a noise. See, you've got games. The require noise and I think that's one of the best things you can do to prepare them. Along with that I'm going to give you one more. If my dog is sound sensitive I'm not just going to regard this as fireworks I'm going to take it as a life approach. My dog hears noises guess what they get? I'm sure you all know they get treats. <laughs> when Alco's on a walk and he hears a noise that he's not sure of and I'm good at reading him so I can pretty much hear what he doesn't like yes treat Yes, treat. He gets a treat. You notice the sound. Yes, it happened. I'm going to acknowledge it happened. You didn't react. I'm going to mark with yes. I'm going to feed you. He pretty much knows most noises now are pretty good. I've not seen him start about a noise for a while now. And he was quite, oh God, he was very sound sensitive. Again, I will be sending you a video of how sound sensitive he was because and it's a video of his start response uh, with someone putting the bins out three doors away when he was a puppy. Oh my God, that was terrifying, apparently. So we have multiple options available here. Uh, well, multiple um, prongs towards the main approach. Um, the basis will be sound desensitization, ideally using a speaker um, to replicate reality. Um, I would practice at various times of the day. Must start low volume, only progress after a few goes of consistent uh, no reactions and at the pace your dog can handle. If you're not sure how they're going to handle it, try some supplements. If you know they're terrified, talk to your vet um, and make sure you've got medication ready. The dog is super, super sound sensitive. Get that orthopedic exam done, uh, check for any signs your dog is skipping or not weight bearing effectively as pain will influence sound sensitivity. You want to set your dog up for success on the day with a long decompression walk, um, training games, snuffle mats, have all your items ready for the evening. You should know how to handle a startle now, positively, um, and you should know to not ignore your dogs. You've also got some games which I'm going to send out. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm first going to see if anyone has any questions, any questions at all, any comments. Uh, you can pop them in the chat box um, and I can address them. Um, or you can ask me any questions over the microphone. You, could, you should just be able to switch your mic on at this point. Um, 
most people usually can um, and ask any questions. Someone got a question? No? Okay. Yeah, um, uh, Donna, yeah. Um, Alfie yeah. reacts to the visual signs of fireworks as well as noise. Is that uh, just straight up desensitization? And good question. Thank you. Um, so, uh, I always make sure everything is, uh, which I think you're probably going to do, closed up curtains and everything um, where you can. Oh, thanks, Kate. Um, I'll let you go. I'll send you the recording. Um, I would um, shut the curtains when you know they're going to happen because I think it's going to kick him off anyway. I think you could try. I'm not used to dogs reacting to the visual, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, it's, it's only on the TV, so if we're watching a film and their fireworks go off on the TV, he hears it and stares at the TV and starts shouting at it, a scary barking at it, and tackles go up and he does his big scary bark at the TV. Okay, and has he heard fireworks in real life in that time yeah. period? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> it's the same. Oh. So it's the same thing, okay. Yeah. Um, if, if he does start barking at them, because you definitely want him to stop the barking, I would try and redirect him with some food. Uh, just, you know, shout some sort of magic word. I'm sure we've covered something like that at some point. Treats, whatever it might be. Get some food, scatter it somewhere else just to interrupt him. Um, I, I think the visual is, is just related to the fact it's where he thinks it's coming from. Um, you could easily... I'm going to suggest it anyway. Um, uh, I think you could try having it if you've got a TV that's synced up to internet in some capacity. Um, play YouTube on there with a visual of fireworks too. Yeah. Um, and see how he does with that. I think maybe he just knows that the sound is coming from the TV rather than the visual, but it's hard for me to know without seeing him, if that makes sense. Of course. So, so you could, yeah, I'd have a go with the sound off, see if he reacts to visual of it on TV or device of yeah. some kind. Um, see what happens. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, give that a go. Let me know and I can send you some more stuff based on what happens. Okay. So I think that's a very niche thing to react to the visual. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank okay. you. I hope that's helped. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> Great. Fab. Sarah, yes. Um, just one question. I might have to be working when their fireworks going off, and I might not be able to get home before right. that happens. <laughs> so, that Wally, it's more Wally. He's just fine with that. Wally, he he startles more than anything else, and he's on supplements. I'm happy to do the yeah. plug in and make a little den for him. Um, is there anything else that I can do? Because I'll be doing a seven our shift before <laughs> I could have someone come in to possibly sit with them but she might be going away <laughs> ah okay um so I would definitely which you've already got to um try and have someone in um it's how if you're just startling um oh it's really tricky for me to know exactly what to suggest um he might be okay he, he might, might be, be okay. absolutely fine if you've got any doubts, maybe talk to your vet because there's always the risk that he could go the other way without you there. Yeah. Um, yeah, because usually I've been here every single time there's been fireworks and we just snuggle down on the bed, have treats and have classical music on and fuss and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> but I might not be back before it starts. <laughs> yeah, that's so tricky. Um, pull a sickie. Uh, <laughs> I don't recommend that really. Tempting, but I don't think I'll get away with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I would maybe have a conversation with your vet. It might be that yeah. on okay. that occasion it's worth trying meds in case something happens. It could be that maybe you trial going out and have a device set up to do fireworks and you watch them on a camera. Yeah. Um, so you see how they react. Of course, it's not exactly the same as real life, but it might give you an indication if you could try like one evening, go hide in the garden or if they know you're there in the car. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
you should be still synced up to your devices somehow maybe have a firework okay. go off with, with a camera on and see sort of what okay. they're doing I think that's probably actually the best starting point okay yeah I can do that. thank you yeah no worries I'm liking all your questions because they're not ones I would have thought of <laughs> so they're quite helpful um so I saw something pop up in the chat box if you any more questions you can let me know yes I will send you all the resources I think you're all who are here are people whose email addresses I have anyway um but if you're not sure send me your email address um and I will send it over um I like the questions there they are now added to my list of things to investigate to be honest um because they were very niche um so uh I'll see if anyone has any questions you can mic or message or whatever it might be um but you've got you've got a few options i've got some sheets i've got some videos and some games um i'm not gonna lie i might be the weekend when i send you those because from that lovely week of being ill i'm still catching up on all of my admin and it's ridiculous but i will get it over to you all if i don't as you all know some of you know, nudge me, please nudge me. Um, as long as it's a polite nudge, not a shouting at me till I cry nudge, I'm okay with it. Um, super, so I can't see any more questions. Um, oh, something popped up. Um, it, it, this phone's rubbish. Things flash up and then they disappear as quickly as they appear. Oh, thank you. Helpful, super, right. In which case, um, I will let you all go and enjoy the rest of your evenings. Um, let keep me updated with how they get on um, with any desensitization and any of the games you might play. Um, I usually, to be honest, in the run up to those nights, I'm usually on Facebook um, in the group or in one in some group posting stuff for people whose dogs might be terrified. And I can probably offer you advice on the night if you're with your dogs. So keep in touch. Let me know how you get on. Otherwise, Arkle didn't even make an appearance, a bit rude of him. Um, I will let you all go and enjoy the rest of your evenings. If you have any questions, give me a shout. But otherwise, I will say goodbye. Thanks for watching. Bye.